That's right. Yeah. Look at this, everyone. And buffalo that has died, hyenas all around it. I mean, I can count. We'll we'll get in there a little bit uh, later. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. At least eight hyenas here. this for sure. But let's see if we can recognize any of these hyenas as the ones from our little clan. They are all very, very, very fat. So what we're looking for here I think is distinctive adults like Madam for example. And Conrad, you just that's wonderful. You say, thank you. Well, it's our pleasure, but mostly you say, from Kingston in Jamaica. That's fantastic to hear. So, like I was saying, what we would be looking for with these hyenas, if we can recognize them, is obvious spot patterns. Uh, in the case of Madame the Matriarch, the mangled ears or the scar-backed female with her scar on the back. I don't think any of the males are here, if this is our group. But some of you who are really good at spotting or identifying the hyenas of the Juma clan from their spots may be able to help us here. I don't see any obvious signs, actually, of our clan numbers. So for those of you who are new, we've had a clan of hyenas on Juma for a long time, and then about, I don't know, four or five weeks ago, they moved their den. We don't know where they moved it. It's not on Juma at the moment. We think probably on Buffalshook or on Sumbambili, which are two properties we cannot traverse. <laughs> this is interesting. From watching the hyenas on almost on a daily basis, we've got very little hyena viewing. And I don't think this is them. I don't recognize these ones, but I might be wrong. So what you're viewing there is a, um, a real sort of uh, characteristic dominance display by hyenas. Hyenas' dominance is largely maintained actually at a kill site like this, where the dominant females, very strict stratified hierarchy amongst the females and the males, females dominant over males, and it is at these kill sites where the clan will fight over food that that hierarchy is enforced. And it's largely a genetic hierarchy so you inherit your status as a hyena. There's a buffalo cow that died here. And quite astoundingly, this will not ruin the water for the other animals. Now, Bill, all the way from Massachusetts, you're wondering about how long it takes for animals on average to be found when they die. Bill, I don't believe that it would be possible to give you an average that would make any sort of logical, statistical sense. Simply because it's so there are so many variables involved. It depends where was the buffalo found, where did it die? Did it die in the open? Or was it spotted by birds first? Did it die down in a drainage line perhaps, in the shade, in the cover? it wouldn't have been spotted. This buffalo died near water in the middle of a drought. So animals are going to come past here all the time. Hyenas especially will drink and they'll come past water holes to check what's around. And if one of them had found it, it would have uh, probably called a few of its mates and they very quickly would have come across here. But you know, if that buffalo had died, say, in the thick bush somewhere under cover, well, could easily have survived 
you know, uneaten until it started to rot, and then the elephants would have found it. Not the elephants, the <laughs> hyenas would have found it. another one down to the kill. I'm just going to move slightly so that you can get a view of them all. Now Amber, while we move, you want to know if hyenas only steal other prey or if they hunt. They're actually extremely good hunters, believe it or not. So, good morning. Amber, they're actually very good hunters indeed. And in many parts of Africa, they hunt more than they scavenge. And if you look at something like a, um, the lions of uh, the Serengeti, for example, apparently there are many prides of lions there that will scavenge even more than the hyenas will. So yes, in this area, more scavenging than hunting, but we've definitely seen them kill wildebeest, we've seen them kill various things. We've seen them kill elephants sometimes, and, you know, very injured, hurt, and small elephants, very weakened, but they will kill them. Yeah, Chris Rogue, I mean, if anyone would know, you would know. You said this doesn't look like our clan. I agree with you. I don't think it does at all. And I think that one eating specifically is one that I've not seen before. Now, I'm just, I was listening. I went silent there because I was listening to the radio. They haven't managed to refine those wild dogs. They went east and west, but quite a long way west of where we were looking at them. So I'm just going to give Brent that update. Brent, their tracks going east, but from Southern Fork, um, and they're on top of vehicle tracks, so those animals went a long way west. I'm not sure if they would have crossed. So, I mean, one of the big things about, if you were, of course, if you were part of the Napoleonic Wars, for example, and you wanted to, I don't know why I use that as, example, as an example, but if you wanted to sort of poison the landscape, if you adopted a, po a scorched earth policy, what you'd do is toss a car carcass of an, an animal like a goat or a sheep or a cow down into a well, and that would ruin the water, right? Now, you would imagine, therefore, that this festering buffalo sitting in one of the last sources of water would be something of a disaster for the animals out here, but it simply isn't. They just manage to, to cope with it. Their digestive systems are such that they're able to cope with this foul and fetid water. I'm just going to move slightly. Um, I quite like the idea of moving closer to the water, so I'm going to do that. If other vehicles come in, I'm going to move back out again, simply because there's not space for everybody to go down there. So let's just go and have a look and see. I like the idea of being eye level to hyenas. Now, Moina Dean, a good question about hyenas and their territories. You say, do hyenas have territories? Can you level at this angle? Moina Dean, they absolutely do have territories, yes. And they defend them very vigorously indeed. Um, in case of a, a, a clan like this, 
This is probably part of that Simbambivi clan, which is or, or um, Arethusa clan, which is a very large clan of hyenas. Now that's definitely not a hyena, I know. Um, what you find is that the, the size of their territory will probably be about, oh, I don't know, maybe 3,000 hectares. So just over about 7,000 acres odd. Isn't that interesting? And they'll defend that vigorously. The males sometimes go foraging into other te clan territories. Females generally stay within their own territories. So it's the males that take the risks. She's a very kind of, uh, I hate to say this, but evil-faced hyena. Most hyenas are not, actually. Uh, Christy, you're in the Great Smoky Mountains. That sounds like a good place to be, especially in the summertime, I imagine. And you want to know about the other scavengers, the avian scavengers, the vultures. And will they, or will the hyenas steal a kill from them? Absolutely, they will certainly kill a. Um, they will certainly kill um, vultures if they can get hold of them, and they'll chase them off a kill. But vultures are very wily, and it's unlikely they'd be caught. And you see, Amber, this is exactly what I'm, uh, what I was on about. You say, can animals get sick from a carcass like this uh, or from drinking this water? And the answer is no, absolutely they cannot. Uh, well, I mean, I guess there must be some cases where they would, but they've just got the digestive systems that are able to cope with um, rotten meat. And this is not a very rotten carcass. I think this thing was probably, uh, it probably succumbed to whatever injuries it was, unless they killed it. I think it's unlikely, though, that these hyenas killed it. But if they did kill it, I think it was last night, and I think it died last night here. It's not smelling at all, so there's no... Um, it's not rotting yet. You hear that crunching? That's the leather. The hyenas are able to digest the leather of the skin. This hyena is massively fat already. Ugh. <laughs> She's just looking up there. And what's interesting is that there are no vultures in the sky above this carcass. I find that very strange. Because it's way out in the open, and so vultures should be able to see it. Very quiet now. It's warmed up substantially since this morning. I know that's a bit grim, everyone. Kevin, nice one. You've obviously been watching for a while, and you know I suspect that hyenas most closely related to cats, but you say, do their footprints look more cat-like or dog-like? Kevin, they look far more dog-like than they do cat-like. And they're sort of, they've got claws, obviously, within the tracks. But they're actually, if you, I mean, if you're a connoisseur, if you like, of tracks, or aficionado of tracks, uh, they don't look similar. So, superficially, I suppose you might say they look more dog-like, but... I mean, if you if you see them, a cat track actually looks much more like a dog track than it does a hyena track. And that's because the hyena track is very squashed, 
all of the pads of the toes and the back pad are very close together. You can actually see them pushing up against each other. Whereas on a dog and a cat track, they tend to be much more exploded. The pa pads are not really touching each other. So the only similarity really is the claws. So superficially, I suppose, you'd look at them and say, ah, well, that looks like a dog track because of the claws. I'm glad I'm not going to be having that for breakfast, I must confess. Oh, very nice. Thank you, Chris Rogue, again. You say we have seen this clan before, but with the dead hippo at Arethusa. I don't think I was part of that sighting. This, she's distinctive. This one that's eating now is distinctive, though. She's very stocky. Well, she's also very fat because she's been eating for a long time. But she's got a kind of squashed face and a very obvious sort of distinctive colour. I don't think there's another vehicle coming. I'm just going to move back from here. That's because it's not great if somebody comes in with guests and they can't get into the same position as us. All right, let's, we're going to sit here for just a little bit longer and then we'll move on and see what else we can find. But while we do that, let's go across to Brent and see what he's got. Yes, agreeing thoroughly with me there, you can see. Otherwise, not much has changed. The rest of them in a, such a state of corpulence that they can hardly move. Ali, I can't really answer your question. You say, do I think there are hyena cubs nearby? I'm afraid I've got no idea. I don't know where this clan's central den is, but as far as I'm aware, it's quite a long way west of here, which means, no, I don't think that there are cubs nearby because the cubs don't travel to the kills until they're about eight months old. Um, and then they'll go sometimes to the kills, but most of the time they stay at the den. And they don't travel sort of with the clan until eight months to 12 months old. I say it doesn't smell bad, but you just get the odd whiff, but it's not so much of a rotting as it is of dirty water mixed with all manner of sort of toxins, I suppose you might describe them. And they'll probably lie around here till that this carcass is finished. As you can see very clearly, they are extremely fat, so if you look at the ones lying down there, one on the left especially there is under. I mean, look at that belly. They've eaten themselves into an absolute stupor. That's normally how we all feel after we've eaten in camp after one of Amanda's meals. Emmy, you wondering if that, <laughs> you say, wait, I think probably as an indication of your incredulity, do you say, do I, is that hyena pregnant or just fat? I think she's quite possibly just fat. If you, if you look at her, um, she's definitely got some swollen teats there. They indicate to me that she's lactating. They certainly look like they she's lactating, so I don't think she's pregnant in the slightest. I think she's just covering or carrying an enormous amount of meat in her belly. We're just getting them. Um, there's another guest, or vehicle full of guests here. Yeah, so Kimmy, not pregnant, just fat. 
And I mean, I say fat. I mean, fat normally indicates some kind of um, indicates some kind of um, yeah, storage of fat. They don't store fat. You know, very few animals out here are able to store fat, and so she's not fat so much as engorged, just full of meat. So unlike. Um, say domestic animals or human beings which store enormous amounts of fat if we eat too much. Animals like out here don't. Laurie in Central California has a slightly disturbing question from you. You say if a murder was committed out here in the bush, would the animals eat it? Um, and before the authorities got here, well, Laurie, I don't want to ask why you're asking that question, but the answer is absolutely, um, the animals would happily eat um, an, a dead human being, uh, hyenas, lions especially, they would eat, li uh, absolutely happily eat uh, dead human flesh. Um, whether or not they would wait for the authorities, I think uh, would depend on the efficiency of the authorities, of the authorities. So out in South Africa, uh, you'd probably find that they'd get away with it, uh, they'd devour the human carcass long before uh, the authorities came anywhere near. <laughs> That's certainly one of the more interesting questions I've ever been asked. Thank you, Laurie. Don't want to know why you asked it. All right, let's head back across to Brent Lear Smith and his elephants. I think we're going to leave here, if you don't mind, everyone, just simply because I think we might be lucky with um, either Shadow or perhaps um, or perhaps those wild dogs. So let's head off from here. A wonderful sighting that we've had. And we'll hand you back to Brent Lear Smith and his large giants. Are we still with the same female? She has now become completely relaxed because we just sat quietly with her and she's busy munching on a variable bush willow. So the rest of the herd is very spread out. Always amazes me how dexterous they are with their trunk. And they're able to manipulate and move their food into the correct position. with the others. I've been watching carefully. <clears throat> There's a, some females and babies, and I think they're moving through the bush towards Gallagher shortcuts. So this is quite a big herd, so there might be some down there already. And also, of course, there's some water down there, so maybe some of them might be already at the pan, so we're going to go have a look there. And if they're not at the pan now, they might be there in the next 10 or so minutes. And hopefully James does have some shadow luck. Unfortunately, I think Karuva is still down in the south, so... She might come back during the day. Now, since we've just seen elephants and we're hoping to find some drinking next, I've got a quiz for you. Uh, where 
exactly are the largest elephant tusks in the world. Uh, where are they from and where do they currently reside? Where are the largest, the longest and heaviest elephant tux, tusks ever recorded? Where are they from and where do they currently reside? If you know the answer to that, questions at wildearth.tv is the email address to send your answer to or you can use the hashtag SafariLive on Twitter. Where uh, are, the, are the largest and longest elephant tusks ever recorded from and where do they currently reside? Okay, so there was some moving through here. So I'm going to try to get to the pan ahead of them. Can you see any through there? there? No, maybe not. Let's have a look. Are there any tracks? Oops, here on the road. And if they're not there, they're on their way there. And just a few more updates on the Inkahumas. Uh, they did kill a baby buffalo, so it's already finished. They finished it overnight, and their last tracks were heading south. There are no tracks that come out onto Juma yet, but hopefully, who knows, maybe they'll move during the day. So we'll definitely check around there on the sunset safari uh, to see if those lions make an appearance.